Hi guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Robbie. I'm Norman. And we don't have um, Johnny tonight. He had a little farm emergency. So. Yeah, someone's got to chase the pigs when they get loose. Yep, he, he's pig chasing. But uh, hopefully we'll have Johnny back in another week or two. You know, sometimes we have a full house, sometimes it's just two of us. But You know, reality sucks, you got to deal <laughs> with it. Yeah, we'll do the best we can to get through with it. So, so what we got tonight, Norm? Well, you were picking on me a couple of weeks ago about my now, name. I would not do anything like that, Norman. Uh huh. And there is a lake up in North Carolina that you were picking on me about. Yeah, Lake it's called Norman. Lake Norman. Yeah. And in the corner of Lake Norman, there's a monster up there. Yep. <clears throat> I think that monster's got a nickname, doesn't it? Yes, and it's called Normie. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're just loving this. <laughs> if you had visual, you would see uh, the big old grin. I, what What's funny about this, folks, is I pitched this show to him, and he's like, no, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> then a day or two later, I get a text message, maybe we should do the show with the Lake Norman Monster. I said, yes, we get to do Normie. <laughs> well, the only reason I gave in was because I read the stories up on this. And I think it's a pretty good story to talk about. So he's going to endure my jabs because it's a good story. It actually turned out to be actually a pretty good story. Um, let's talk a little bit about Lake Norman. Okay, Lake Norman monster is a giant monster that has been seen by swimmers. It is said to inhabit the Lake of North Lake Norman of North Carolina. The description of it, Lake Norman monster, also known as Normie, is often described as long and serpentine with scaly fins or flippers. The creature has been seen by dozens of witnesses, swimmers, fishermen, campers, water skiers, and scuba divers. Descriptions vary in color, size, but it seems people are definitely seeing something large and frightening in the lake. Now, a little history about the lake. This lake is man-made. Yep. It's pro- isn't it one of the largest man-made lakes in North Carolina? Uh, I believe so. Lake Norman is a man-made lake located in North Carolina and was created by Duke Power in 1963 as part of the Cowan's Ford Dam. It's the largest man-made lake in North Carolina with over 500 miles of shoreline and a surface area of 32,500 acres. Yep, that's a big lake. More than enough for at least one large unknown animal. So there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, that's, that's big. Now, I knew I had heard that that Lake Norman was the biggest man-made lake in North Carolina. Yeah. Kind of like our um, Chocassie yep. is the largest le- man. I think it's still the largest man-made lake in South Carolina, but if not, it's still big. But I don't think it's quite that big, but it's still a pretty good size lake. Oh yeah. Another interesting thing about Lake Norman is there's a nuclear power plant out there, so this may or may not have a tie into the sightings. So we could have a mutated catfish or something out there. Yeah, might have a mutation. Because, going on. and the reason I say that is my uncle used to be a dive master, a dive instructor, scuba mm-hmm. diving. And he used to take his classes up to Joe Cassie. Right. And <clears throat> my uncle's not a small guy. He's 6'5", and was probably 325 pounds at the time. He's a little bit bigger than that now. But at the time, it was, you know, he was still in fairly good shape. So, right. you know, 6'5", 325 pounds is not small. No, not by any definition. And on this particular day, which is the last day he said he'd ever took a class up there, he said he knew, was doing their open water certification, mm-hmm. and he said he looked down and he saw a catfish on the bottom of the lake that was bigger than he was, and that was the, time, that was the minute he decided that he's not taking any classes back to Joe Cassie. You know, Joe Cassie's tied into Duke Power. Yeah. Obviously. So I've heard just something similar down there by Hartwell Dam about divers from the Corps of Engineers diving down at the base of the dam on the deep end coming across catfishes that were bigger than they were. And yeah, see, so that's the same exact story. Yeah, it may be doing with the water, the depth, and the abundance of food. Well, most of those lakes that tie into those power plants like that, they're unnaturally warm. Yes. Um, because of, you know, that the runoff. The runoff from the plant, because mm-hmm. they use that water to go through the reactors and cool the, rea- <coughs> Excuse me. cool the reactors, 
Right. So, you know, what goes into that? Like, yeah, I've always heard fish at those lakes don't really eat the fish, especially the ones that are around the spillways and yeah. things like that. So, you know, who knows? This may be something like that, that some kind of aberration. Possible. There could be something. We're going to talk about some of the sightings and about the different types of um, creatures that they're seeing. And then we'll talk some more about maybe maybe there is a connection to this. You know, we might have a fledgling Godzilla in the works. Who knows? Huh? Well, according to Matthew Broderick, that's what Godzilla was. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was a pretty good movie. I was watching it the other day. I was talking to DA about it. And this is just a little off topic. When you guys were talking about reptilians, about their f- footsteps... I was sitting there looking at the, how you walk and, and looking at the footsteps, and I said, that looks very similar. You know, if you remember the movie, get a chance to look at the first mm, 15 minutes, know. and you'll see what I'm talking about. I know, when, uh, when it's looking at how it, they're kind of offset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very similar. Yeah. And that's just from a movie. Yeah. All right. We'll get back to that another day. But let's get back to the story here. Created in 1967 by building the Collins Ford Hydroelectric Station on the Catatawba River, Lake Norman is the largest body of fresh water in North Carolina. It boasts approximately 500 miles of shoreline and is over 100 feet deep in some areas. The lake is owned by Duke Energy and is home to the McGuire Nuclear Plant. Through the lake is man-made, there have been reports of strange creatures lurking in the depth. 100 feet that's a good place for yeah, catfish for sure. Yeah, that's less. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. <coughs> that's and, a, I mean, that, that's deep enough to, I mean, people are, you know, 100 feet, you know, when you think about it, people are like, oh, well, that's not really that. But for potential catfish? Yeah, when you start talking about yeah. being able to display something that size, that's, speaking of that, is there any, Approximation on how big this thing is. There's some mentions in here. I'll, I'll, I'll bring them up on it. So, but without getting into that yet, though, 100 feet could well, very rare, could very easily, yeah, hide how big this thing is. Yeah, they're about average. Seems to be about six foot, maybe a little bit more. So, size wise, lake versus lake size wise, how big would uh, would Lake Norman be compared to Loch Ness? Small. It's on the small side compared yeah. to Loch Ness. Yeah. So Loch Ness is what? Oh, what was it? A thousand? Yeah, it's it's big. I, I didn't know the exact number, but um, and it's a lot deeper. But the difference right. there is colder, and actually had a connection to the ocean and stuff. Where this is totally a man-made creation. Yeah, there's no connection to it. I don't even think there's any creeks or anything that feed into it at all um, like Joe Cassie I think there's a few creeks that might feed into it yeah. that's where they built it in that basin to be honest I'd have to look at the geog- geological map I, I don't th- maybe you know and folks in the comments wherever you correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not from North Carolina I'm from South Carolina but just from what I can remember and pull up in memory I don't think there's any kind of natural there may be some, some small Small runoff creeks in there, but as far as big river systems, I no, don't, don't think, think there's any rivers are going into there. All right, let's see here. Normie isn't shy. Isn't the shy the creature? Normie isn't shy. The creature is fond of chasing fast boats and often bumps up. Excuse me, bumps up against water skiers and swimmers. There have even been attacks. A scuba diver reported narrowly escaping a creature with a dog-like head and red eyes that chomped onto one of his flippers. The flipper was lost, but the diver survived. In another incident, a person on a jet ski claimed that a monster surfaced in front of him, brushed up against his leg, leaving a slimy substance that caused an itchy rash. Excuse me, caused an itchy rash. Now that's <laughs> interesting, because there are some creatures called there's a salamander that lives in the lake. It's about two, two and a half feet big. Now, salamanders or a lizard, some lizards secrete secretions. Mm-hmm. And like this possibility that it might have ran up against one of these salamander creatures, the jet skier, and made contact with the skin, and that could possibly explain his encounter. You know, I'll explain, I'll talk more about that later on about what these um, salamanders are called. But, you know, this is a possible explanation for that one. I'll tell you about it here in just a second. 
There are several theories to explain the Lake Norman monster phenomenon. Some believe the creature is none other than a catfish of gigantic proportions. Others think people are seeing a large fish called bullfin. Alligators are possibly large salamanders known as hellbenders, which can re reach up to two feet in length. Of course, the typical prehistoric crocodorian theories abound as well, but most personal favorites, and I mean that people like this theory the best, is that Normie is a mutant fish created by the pollution from the nuclear power plant after all. The lake is man-made, so shouldn't it, the, its monster be too? Hmm. That's where I was talking about the, the salamander maybe causing the uh, um, rash. Well, I Tyler pull up a picture of a bowfin, and you know, if you look at that fish, and I know I know you folks can't see this, but I'm like the picture that. Norm's got on there. I mean, obviously the head doesn't look like it, but that's that's a pretty close representation of other than without with the head and the legs being not being there. That's <laughs> you know honestly, the, looking at the picture that they draw on here, to me, that kind of looks like a mutated alligator. Well, true, but I'm talking about like the fin on top and oh yeah, you know that just. Uh, it does. I mean, I could see if there was a if there was a bow fan in there that was abnormally large. Yeah, that that, that could, could be it. That could definitely be a misidentification of something like it. And like, you know, we're not here to say that the monster does exist or doesn't exist. The what we try to do is say, okay, what what is something that, that could either rule this out, or if we can't rule it out, then what is it? That to me. That would be a good possibility if it is a large breed of that, which, you know, we... Uh, it's like alligator gar. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, think about that. Look at alligator gar's body is a lot like that. Yeah. So if there... Which I don't know if an alligator gar could be... You know, I guess somebody could have put one up there. And I'm assuming that... alligator gar in Lake Hartwell, so... Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming it would be able to survive. So, you know, something like that probably would... Definitely. You know, look at the picture and look at the alligator gar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good possibility and, right there. And some of the, I mean, look at look at that one right there. I mean, that's, that's a big alligator gar. Yeah, and I've seen bigger than that. That's big, but I've seen bigger than that. Yeah. That definitely is a possibility of what people could be seeing. I don't know what the hell And they're like. aggressive. I didn't know that. Yes, alligator gar are very aggressive. I've only run into one alligator gar one time. Yeah. Okay. Six and a half feet, over a thousand pounds, or excuse me, a hundred pounds. You know, that's that fits the size description that you said. Yeah. yeah. And they got the potential to get bigger than that. So I mean, think about three hundred fifty pounds, ten foot is uh, one record. of the largest specimens recorded. That's big for a fish. And a fish that's got the face on it with all them teeth. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to run into that in the water. Could you check the hellbender for us, please, Tyler? Is this the salamander you're talking about? Yeah. Because they say it could be up to two feet. 30 inches. Uh, that's about yeah. 24 inches is two feet, so yeah. 30, 30 inches. I wonder if it could be a mutated one. Yeah, could be. I mean, and look, it's it's slimy. Mm -hmm. You know, folks, we're looking at the pictures here, and depending on the if it's got, the skin has got a defensive mechanism, that could explain the itch that the patient, the person responded to when their leg was brushed up against it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, there's. I mean, think about all the frogs in uh, the rainforest, the poison arrow frogs. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them. You know, if you just touch that secretion, it'll kill you. I mean, oh, yeah. I've seen, I can't tell you how many documentaries I've watched. I have they to. pick them up with leaves and rub oh, yeah. them on their air tips when they're hunting yeah. uh, the primates that they hunt that live in the trees. So, I mean, there's plenty of things in nature that could cause something like that. Oh, yeah. <coughs> but, me, folks. you know, that that's two possibilities of what could be. Yeah, if there's a if there's a big alligator gar or a couple big alligator gar up in that 
yeah. that lake. I mean, that that to me, the little artist rendering here, minus the legs, that's a <laughs> that's a really good possibility if I'd it's a big alligator, alligator car. car. And someone just mistook the flipplers for a possible lake. Yeah. You know, I was I was reading some of the um, sightings, and all of them were in the water. None were seen on the shoreline or anything like that. Everything occurs in the water. Um, everybody's either been on a boat, dock, swimming, scuba diving, or something. But uh, so it's interesting. It's just like I say, for a man-made lake, they've had probably. 15 to 20 sightings that are recorded on a website they have for for the Lake Norman Monster. That's recorded there. Now there could be there are more, but these are ones that are already recorded. Well, I mean, like I said, you know, I'd be curious just to know. You know, I know you said there's there's gar in Lake Hartwell. But, you know, there are gar and there are alligator gar, which are two separate. Mm-hmm. So I would be curious if uh, alligator gar could survive up this way. You know, usually you find them in Louisiana and Texas, places like that, where it's are typically a little bit warmer than mm-hmm. what we got up here. But there again, that's what we're talking about is how abnormally warm these waters are, the these hydroelectric right. lakes are. So let's see if... The lone alligator gar was believed to have arrived in South Carolina after being released from a private aquarium. Alligator gars are relatively prevalent in the, in the aquarium environments. Another sole alligator gar was also taken from California Reservoir called Clifton Court Four Bay years earlier in September of 91. So they have been in different areas mm-hmm. other than their you know, other than their native. Yeah. But I mean, look at the uh, look at the problem Florida's having with the Burmese python and all these other invasive species oh, yeah. that have gotten let out. They've proved that they can survive in a different habitat than what they're meant to be in. They've adapted. Who's to say that somebody didn't turn some of them loose over there? Exactly. There's I mean, goldfish in Lake Harbor. Yeah, and, and look at the look at the snakeheads. You know, the those fish are like. They're totally invasive. Yeah, and I mean, they, from what I understand, they can pretty much survive anywhere. Yeah. They can get big, too. I, I'm not saying that that would be what this is. Cause There's been there, a few B-rated movies about snakehead monsters. Yeah, true. And, but they, they are, a lot of that stuff that they talk about is true. They're extremely aggressive. I would water, if if, if there was a If there was a good size snakehead, it would not surprise me for it to be going after people that are swimming in the water. Yeah. Because they're very aggressive, so you know that, that's just a couple of possibilities of what this could be. Mm-hmm. But there again, this could be a big cryptid up there. There is one more possibility, and this is an explanation I found on another site related to the Lake Palmer monster. A local boat captain named Captain Gus, who lived in the area since 1916, guides lake cruises and fishing tour- tours. Captain Gus said that when people claim to see the Lake Norman monster, what they may have seen in reality is a four-foot female gar who's spawning and being followed closely by 15 to 20 male gar who are three feet long. Captain Gus calls this a daisy chain, and it gives the impression of a long monster-type fish. Okay, so that proves that there's gar in... There, so I guess if there's gar there, there's it's a possibility that an alligator gar could could survive in there. But like you said, if there's gar in there and there's two or three swimming nose to tail, you know, and that's look at uh, some of the reports of sea monsters back in the you know early seafaring days, basking sharks will swim nose to tail like that, mm-hmm. and a lot of those sightings of some of these so-called sea monsters were proven to be. You know, a group of basking sharks just swimming nose to tail. Well, hold on to your peanut butter. Here's one more thing. <laughs> Adding to the mystery is the fact that a species of mysterious freshwater jellyfish have been found in Lake Norman. Two and a half feet long, 
Oh, yeah. That mysterious jellyfish have been found in Lake Norman, and two and a half feet long salamanders known as the hellbanders have been spotted, as well as decades long reports of seeing human sized catfish near the Collins Ford Dam. Captain Gus claims he's caught one weighing 52 pounds. Eels and snakehead fish exist here too. Could any of these strange creatures of Mother Nature be normie? Other sightings have included seeing long and serpent like creatures with strange fins. Some have claimed to see a monster on the shoreline. Grass carp were introduced to this lake several years ago to help rid of nuisance plants. Given that carp can grow big, some people were mistaking them for a sea monster, maybe. Carp can go extremely big. And, like I said, they they have been known to come right up on the shoreline when they're feeding. Really? Yeah. How big can grass carp get? Without, until Tyler pulls it up, you're probably looking at some, you can get up around 20, 30 pounds or more, probably. Wow. 4.6 feet. Oh, excuse me, 97 pounds is the maximum weight. So, yeah, that's that's a big fish. I mean, that would definitely be something if you were swimming in the water and wasn't expecting it and you turn around and saw it, that a 97-pound fish would be kind of scary. The um, jellyfish was a surprising for a freshwater jellyfish to be there. That may have been someone had a pet. I know it sounds weird, but people have strange exotic pets. Yeah, that's true. And I, I didn't know there was... I didn't know there was such a thing as a freshwater jellyfish, but I guess you learn something new every day. And if the waters are nice and warm because of the the hydro the nuclear plant, hey, anything's possible. And then freshwater eels too. Yeah, now I know there's freshwater eels because you know that mo well actually most eels, with the exception of the moray and green eels and stuff like that, most eels are the ones that you see that are true eels like that, not the big snapping jaw eels right. like the green and the morays are freshwater. I mean, uh, the electric eels are all freshwater eels. I wonder too if, and we had, nobody's mentioned this, is turtles. If there isn't some well, large there, species of turtle out there. Well, there's de definitely uh, snapping turtles. Um, I don't know. I don't know how far up alligator snapping turtles are. I know, I know there's but there's big, we call them mud turtles, mm -hmm. the snapping turtles. But, you know, my grand, great grandfather's pond that was just right across the street from my house, we used to, the, the biggest one I saw him pull out of that pond was 35 pounds. Wow. I mean, that's, I mean, that's like, <laughs> that's like a turtle that's like, you know, yeah. two foot across. That's a big turtle. Now, officially, there are no alligators in Lake Norman because supposedly they keep a really close eye on that. But who's to say they miss one? No. Yeah. I mean, from where we're sitting, uh, Tyler, pull up how far Laurel and Hardy Lake is in Pickens County, from where we're at. They had an alligator? Mm-hmm. How long ago? No, Laurel and Hardy Lake. Like the comedians? Yeah. It's in Marietta, so you're looking at probably, it's up not far from, not from our little spot. So, you know, 10, 15 minutes from here, yeah. 20 tops. They pulled a five foot alligator out of that pond. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, someone dropped it in there. Oh, yeah. Little, it, well, see, they'd been, the sheriff's office had been getting reports for years that they'd been out. And of course, people were like, ah, there's no alligators in there. I said, ah, you're crazy. And sure enough, uh, I guess about 10 years ago, give or take, DNR actually finally saw, I think a deputy actually finally saw it. They called DNR out there and they trapped it and got it out, but yeah, it was in there. I mean, <laughs> just just down the road from where we're sitting right now in the cabin. Wow. You know, so that's why I'd say you know, maybe it's a possibility that there is an alligator up there because the head, the alligator, depending if it's nighttime, and just... Well, well, depending on the conditions that somebody saw a dog-like head, maybe they mistook it. Well, and you did say something about red eyes. Yeah. So if 
Mm-hmm. If that di- if the water was kind of murky and he had a dive light on, he turned around, shined it. There's your eye shine. That's the color eye shine that gators have. Mm-hmm. Is that reddish orange? So it's possible. So there's a lot of possibilities into this, but being a true cryptid, I'm gonna have to yeah, probably pass on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's plausible that it's a cryptid, but I'm gonna say that it's more likely that it's gonna be like old Captain Gus said, it's either a couple of garb, maybe a possibly an alligator garb, because that definitely would, to me, that picture says alligator garb, and somebody's just kind of mistook some of the fins. Yeah. Cause, uh, you know, murky water, especially if you're swimming and you see something and then like you that. Panic a yeah, because stress makes you see all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. and, I mean, you, you've seen that in your line of work, I've mm-hmm. seen it in mine. You know, people always remember, so, and it turns out, no, that's not exactly what it was that happened. But, you know, it, until there's more conclusive that, proof. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm inclined to say it's plausible that there, there's some, there may be some kind of cryptid in there because there's a lot of factors that, you know, could lead into possible genetic mutations with all the nuclear. Uh, the water that goes through the reactors to clear that down, or clear or cool that down, rather. It's but I'm going to, you know, Occam's razor, I'm going to say if, if it's a known fact that there's gar and these other things in there, I'm going to say that's more than likely what it is. Yeah. I'm going to go like so. I'm going to go with the gar, maybe long shot of an alligator. Yeah. I, I would say this is pro- if that's on the... the more unlikely side as possible, but I'm, I'm gonna say that with you, that's more on the unlikely side. I think a gar or an alligator gar possibly could be your yeah. your main culprits for what this is. Carp, but, you know. Yeah, I mean it could be a big car. I would think it would probably be more so, with the description that it's laid out. That looks more like an alligator gar's head. Yeah, but, I'm gonna stay with the gar, alligator gar just due to the description, and the but, farthest out would be alligator. But here's, you know, different people saw different things in different depths. So, you know, if somebody had read somebody else's description and they saw just a, you know, just a, the back end of a, a grass carp or something like that, a big grass carp up there, you know, it's possible. But, you know. We said alligators have been found up here too, so that it, oh, that's yeah. not out of the realm of possibility. It's true. We've so. had what, a couple of alligators up here in Hartwell Lake. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's still probably a few more out there just ain't found them yet. Yeah. That's true. And you know, years ago it wasn't as hard. I mean, you can't get an alligator now unless you've got some kind of all these. You can still get like caiman and things like, which makes no sense to me. But or at least you could a couple of years ago, and they may have changed some of that now with all the the regulations that are coming in but you know 20 30 years ago you could get an alligator a lot of you could go down to florida and buy one off the side of the road yeah, well, four years old my dad bought an alligator we had for the longest time and kept it in a fish tank in the basement and then one day it disappeared yeah so i mean as long as alligators live if you had a single solitary alligator in a place like that that was full of fish, full of big catfish, plenty of, you know, opportunity, and there was no other predator. top predator, I mean, it's, it's going to... fat and sassy. Yeah, it's going to survive, and it's going to, you know, the whole thing was, you don't have to worry about, in a lake like that, you don't have to worry as much about the cold weather. I mean, it's going to get colder than it probably likes, but it's not going to be, be so cold that it's going to force it to no, it, it's not like you're not going to have ice problems like you do in some of these other lakes like in, that get really cold where it has to really go it it could be the point is it could be active all year round right and like I say all it's got to do is get down near by the reactor station mm-hmm. Water's warm oh yeah that spillway where it comes out of there it, yeah that, it, I would say during the winter months that would be a good place to find if if there is one that would be a good place to I think the deepest part of that lake is like 130 yeah. feet. And according to what Tyler just pulled up, alligators can uh, survive 
as low as 40 degree Fahrenheit water. That's pretty dang cold. I mean, the water that the people went into for the Titanic was 32 degrees. That's not far off of that. Yeah. And he also said Lake Norman does not get that cold in the winter. So if they can survive in 40 degree Fahrenheit water and it doesn't get that cold, then yeah, that if I would say maybe that's not as far out of the yeah. realm of possibility as we initially said. So. Actually, until more conclusive proof and better pictures come about where someone actually traps it. Alligator so. gar is the top of the list. Yeah. Or gar. I would say side our, by side there. I would say our our top three culprits for this would be alligator gar, gar, alligator. Then Possibly big catfish, grass carp, yeah. maybe a bowfin. I don't know that that's. You know, I think that's one of the lower end possibilities because yeah, it just. That. But one, two, and three, I think, is probably closer to yeah. what it is, or a combination of you know, a combination of of a couple of different ones. Yeah. So, anyway, that's a good little story, Norm. I like that. Like I say, once I read it, and check a few of the different things I said well I can put this together and actually it'll make a good story yeah and I, I think that's but that's the kind of stuff that, that I want to do is mm -hmm. you know a little it may not be a cryptid but it's something that it makes is, you think yeah it makes you think and, and it's it, something that a lot of people have seen and don't know what it is and, you know but you you feel, find this article where this guy that has been out there and he's worked this lake and he's run these tours and things like that and he has seen you know some of these things that could very well possibly be okay, the mistake alternative yeah. theory from somebody else which is a good which was one of the things i was glad i found too because then it opens up the realm of possibilities yep. other than yeah so yeah. well like i said like we end every show if you folks want to talk about this show or you got a, a topic you want us to look into you can get us uh on email at what's really out there 2022 at gmail.com that's all together what's really out there no uh no apostrophes no commas no anything like that just what's really out there 2022 at gmail.com norm how else can they get in touch with us they can find us on facebook and what's really out there we have a facebook page where you can im us you can direct message you can direct message us to uh, do the facebook page using messenger or leave a message on the facebook page itself tell us what's going on if you got a quote if you got an instance going going somewhere or you got a story you want to share or you just want to say hi reach out and go hi thanks for what you've been doing you know you can reach us there we have, um, I, my, I keep an eye on the site. To, uh, Robbie keeps an eye on the site. Uh, somebody, I'm going to give a shout out tonight. She helps out with the site. Her name's Krista. She's from Blondes and Booze. She's wonderful help. Krista, thank you for your help. And yep, keep thanks, Krista. And the things I'm slack on. Yeah, she's really helped us out on our, helped us grow our Facebook page uh, over the past couple weeks. Um, also, you can catch these shows on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, um, YouTube, YouTube um, we're Spotify. We're working on, uh, we've hit our 20th episode, and so now I'm trying to get all the paperwork filled out for, to be on iTunes and Amazon. What about Pandora? Uh, I don't know that Pandora is off the Spreaker. I have to check and see. I, I don't remember if that was one okay. of the ones that was listed or not, but uh, Spreaker you know, we can probably expand into some other ones too, but um, also, like Norm said, we do have the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is what's really out there. Uh, you can't find every one of the episodes on there, like the first four, I think, four or five mm -hmm. episodes are not on there because... You got a couple for your first... You're missing one or two of your first four. Yeah. Your first four or five. There's yeah. Two or... Ever Do since we, ever since you've been here though, every episode since yeah. you've been doing it has been on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, so you can get you can get most all of them on YouTube, but you can get them all on Spreaker and iHeart, 
things like that. Just search what's really out there. Um, yeah, if you got something you want us to look at, give us a call. Somebody will, on any one of those platforms, um, somebody's always monitoring it. It's We've got alerts set up that if anybody leaves a message, it'll go to either go to Tyler or Taylor or me or Norman. Uh, and there again, if you want to send a smoke signal, Johnny's always watching those. Yep. <laughs> Johnny takes care of the analog system, and we take care of everything else. Yep. So that's all I got from the cabin. Norm, you got anything else? Just y'all be safe. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's in case we don't t hear from you again. Until then. All right. We'll see you next time, guys. <laughs>